Okay, after? Okay, inshallah. <clears throat> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Those that know me, they will know this response is not a response. You guys just whispered. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Those that are newly married, their voices are more louder, mashallah. I don't want to hear the voice of those that are newly married. Those that are married for a long time or those that are not married, I need a bigger response. I want the people in Kaduna to hear your response, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. MashaAllah, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Alhamdulillahi wa kafa wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala ibadihi ladhi nasdafa wa ba'd. My brothers, my sisters, those online, those on the live stream, those who will watch this later, I'm absolutely delighted to be in this beautiful masjid known as the Masjid in Dimimox in this beautiful city of Maiduguri. This masjid holds a lot of history for those that have been following Ahlul Sunnah footsteps for a very long time. Sheikh Jafar, rahmatullahi alayhi, may Allah have mercy on him and grant him paradise. He has actually learned a lot of lessons in this beautiful masjid. And alhamdulillah, we are happy today to be actually one of the fruits of the foundation that they've led or they have laid down uh, in terms of Islam in Nigeria and in Maiduguri. May Allah bless the owner of this masjid, grant him peace and success, happiness, whatever he wishes in the dunya and the akhirah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every single one of you that have made the effort to attend. Our mothers who are at their homes sitting down to listen to this because I can see the sound system is amazing. MashaAllah. One thing that I notice in Meduguri, the chairs are very comfortable and the sound system is also audible. MashaAllah. That is a good plus for Meduguri. My brothers, my sisters, we have a topic today at hand and the topic is to discuss brotherhood in Islam. Brotherhood that Islam as a religion brings us onto. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he started the creation of mankind, he did something known as a companion for Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, and he gave him a companion known as Hawa. May peace and blessings be upon her too. Ameen. This is how Allah started the creation of mankind. Myself and you yourselves here. Allah started us in a way that when he created us, he created a companion. And through that companionship, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has advised every single one of us. Whoever can get married, get married. Because you need to reproduce. The Ummah has to grow. Islam, those that are practicing the religion, need to get to a wider number. Am I right? And towards the call of Islam, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now the issue of companionship, having a male and a female, this is from the beginning, regardless of the faith, whether a Muslim or a non-Muslim. Because the Christians do get married and they also have kids. The Jews do get married and they also have kids. But the real brotherhood that we want to speak today about start with Islam. And this is why I want to go back far down the lane of history to bring up issues that have happened during the acceptability of Islam in Mecca al mukarrama The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was given prophethood at a certain age. And my sessions are very interactive. I'm going to just speak on anyone and ask him for the answer. So the brother with the blue that is looking at me direct. At what age? My brother, you are turning. I'm referring to you. MashaAllah. Turn right, turn left. You face me back again. InshaAllah. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was given prophethood. At what age? At? At 40. This is one answer. Brother Khamis, don't tell them what I'm about to do. The other brother in blue. I'm referring to, yes, at what age? 40, mashallah. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam received revelation at the age of 40. Through who? Through the angel we know as Jibreel alayhi salatu wa salam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it that every prophet that is to come 
has to pass through the training of Jibreel. All the prophets of Allah that are mentioned in the Quran, 25 of them, those that are not even mentioned in the Quran, as far as a person or a man is a messenger from Allah, Jibreel will be the person to come to him and inform him that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen you to become a lead of the society, guiding people towards the goodness. This is how it started. When Jibreel came to him and the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was very frightened. He says, Iqra, read in the name. Iqra, read. Bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. In the name of your Lord that has created you. Immediately he ran back to the house of who? His wife known as Khadija binti Khwailid. Then he went back to her and then he said, Oh my wife, cover me, cover me, cover me because I have seen something today that I've never experienced. And when Jibreel told him, Iqra, the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was very upright. He says, Ma ana biqari. I'm not a reciter. I don't know how to read. I don't know how to read. He says, Iqra, read. And then he ran back to the cave. Sorry, to the house because he was in the cave. And then he said to her, I'm very frightened. Someone came to me and told me to read and I don't know where he's coming from. She says, oh Muhammad, Allah will never humiliate you because you are a man of integrity and dignity. You're a man that upholds kinship. You're a man that understands the values that Allah has bestowed in brotherhood, relationship, family, humanity, community, and whatever it may be. So she took him to a man known as Waraka, Bin Inawfal. And when he went to Waraka bin Inawfal, that was a monk. And then Waraka asked him, Oh Muhammad, convey to me what you have seen. He says, Oh Waraka, this is what I have seen. He said, Really, from the books of the past, it is a great indication and a clear sign that you are going to be a messenger of Allah. And the Prophet was confused because Waraka has given him that information based on what has happened to other prophets that were mentioned in the scriptures of the past, whether the Bible or the Israeli riwayat. So he knew this was mostly the chain. The prophets receive message from Allah or prophethood by getting a little bit frightened. Look at Moses, may peace be upon him, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, come to Adil Muqaddas. Come to this place and meet me. When he went there, what happened to him? What happened to him? Uh-oh. MashaAllah. He, he fainted. And this is reported in the Quran in Surah Al-Taha. Because he was very shocked. He was frightened as well what he saw. Allah spoke to him. Allah says, Inni ana Allahu la ilaha illa ana fa'abudini Allah says, O Moses, I have chosen you to be a prophet. And in that I'm informing you that I am Allah, referring to him, the most merciful. He says, and you should establish the prayer and you should obey all my commandments. So if you look at the prophet who chain, there is a certain type of anxiety or fear that Allah puts into them before actually the real prophet who comes into gloom, mashallah. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he knew now that this message is from Allah. And I am instructed to worship none but Allah. And Jibreel was coming to him, teaching him the verses of the Quran, the Sharia, and whatever has to be done in Islam. Who was the first person to accept Islam? MashaAllah, mixed feelings. The first person to accept Islam is who? Was Khadija. That was the wife of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She was number one. The first woman to accept Islam and the first human to accept Islam was Khadija. Now this shows you how at that time the wives of the messengers were so good. Allahu Akbar. Now when you come with a matter, your wife will tell you, Man hadatha fi amrina hadha fa huwa raddun. Allahu Akbar. So she was upright. She accepted the message. She said, yes, definitely. I trust you. You're a trustworthy man. As Sadiq al Mazduq. We know you are a messenger of Allah. An upright man. In Mecca, his head was always upright because in everything he was doing or he has been asked to do, he goes to 100% in terms of perfection and truthfulness. 
Then Islam began to spread. Allah now informed him, O Messenger of Allah, start calling people that are very close to you. Then he started with Khadija. His closest friend, who has never ever worshipped Allah wal Uzza, was Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu anhu. And his name is not Abu Bakr as Siddiq, for your reference, his name is Abdullah bin Abi Quhafa is, is the kunya of the father. Bin Uthman, that's correct. His name was Abdullah bin Uthman, radiallahu anhu arda. So this man, a great man, Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu anhu, and the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to him and he said, look, oh my friend, there is something I have seen, and this that I have seen is a clear indication from Allah. Allah is trying to deliver a message. Well, I'm calling you towards that message. Without a flicker, without a second thought, Abu Bakr accepted the message of Islam and its entirety. Allahu Akbar. And this is why if you look at what the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has informed us, that if you want to know who is a person, look at the people that he roams around. A person is on the religion of his best friend and you should look out who you actually befriend as a friend. Look at how brotherhood was forming. From the beginning, between his wife and him, there was a sign of humility, humanity, concern, and whatever it is there. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already informed us in the Quran, in Surah Al-Rum, that, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَادًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمًا There is already love and there is mercy that has been encompassed by Allah in the hearts. So immediately that concern, that unity was there. She accepted the message. Yet who was the next person? Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. Because of the closeness, the brotherhood that exists between the messenger and Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr did not question the religion. He immediately accepted the religion. And then when Abu Bakr accepted the religion, he already has some few friends that there is a good brotherhood between them. Next day, who accepted Islam? Abdurrahman ibn Awf, Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqasim, Al-Arqab ibn Abi Al-Arqab. Many of them accepted Islam. Scores of number of people now accepted Islam. Now this growth, this religion of Allah is receiving a monumental growth. Do you think they will accept the message of Abu Bakr if there wasn't a brotherhood between them and Abu Bakr, regardless of the faith? They will have not accepted the message. It's very easy for me now to come to you and say, brother, I'm traveling tomorrow and I want you to go with me. MashaAllah. And brother Sunusi always never rejects my offer. If I say, let's travel, he always comes. MashaAllah. If the brother doesn't trust you or believes in what you are doing is good, if the brother who doesn't exist is never going to follow you. In good or bad, when you tell people, my brother, come, let's go to the madrasa, we need to learn. If it's a very negative person, he will tell you, go, I will come later. But if he's a good person, even if he doesn't want to learn, the influence that you have over him has made him come. Islam speaks about this in a bigger way. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in Surah Ali Imran, وَذُكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً فَعَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَسْبَحْتُمْ بِنِئْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا وَكُنْتُمْ عَلَى شَفَا وَكُنْتُمْ عَلَى شَفَا هُفْرَةٍ مِّنَ النَّارِ فَأَنْقَذَكُمْ مِنْهَا in Surah Ali Imran, Allah says, وَعَتَسِمُوا بِحَبِّ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا Hold onto the rope of Allah. Islam, وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا And never be segregated. Never be divided. وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً Remember the favors of Allah upon you. Before you were clear enemies. فَعَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ Now Allah has mended your heart. فَأَسْبَحْتُمْ you guys now are awakened, Ikhwanan. You are brothers in Islam. You are brothers in business. You are brothers in whatever it may be. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Look at the uniformity, the unity that Islam has brought amongst the heart of the people. 
Now let's go back to the story of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. At that juncture, Abu Bakr came and many other people followed the religion of Islam. A lot of people were coming onto Islam and the da'wah was getting bigger and bigger and Islam was getting known. The Quraysh were very concerned. And this is why I want to inform you, my brothers, my sisters, Whatever we do in our lives, the closest people to us, we should give them certain leverage to accept their message or a certain companionship in the best way. Because even the Quraysh, who were disbelievers at that time, when they meet Abu Jahl, when he meets with Abu Sufyan before he became a Muslim, and many other of them, they were connected to each other. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Oh, you Muslim, if you do not become one, if you don't have unity within yourselves, how are you going to prosper? How are you going to enjoy the religion of Islam that we have kept for you when we have made every step of Islam a brotherhood chain to be connected? How? The Christians, the Jews, look at them today. When you look at people that are from different faiths, they are very together. The togetherness is huge, but look at Islam. Even in Islam, we are separated. In Islam, understanding in Islam, we are separated. What type of life are we living when other people that we know their faith is not the correct faith? We know that they are not practicing the right message. We that are the people and the, subhanallah, the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why are we failing in our own capacities when Allah has uplifted the religion with brotherhood? You see a Muslim today, he is not happy over the affairs of another Muslim. Because someone has progressed in life, you are jealous. Why? What's the need of the jealousy? That is even one example. You see a brother today suffering, a brother wants to die, you will say, I'm not going to save him. Why? Because he married the lady I wanted to marry. Allahu Akbar. That's madness. Islam permits you Touch a woman who is drowning. Even the parts that are, mashallah, you get the message. Islam permits you. So what is stopping you from assisting your brothers? And this is why the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, says, مَن نَفَسَ عَن مُؤْمِنٍ كُرْبَةٍ مِنْ كُرَبِ الدُّنْيَا نَفَسَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ كُرَبِ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ Whoever assists a believer in whatever difficulty that he may go, through or he may be going through Allah says I'm going to assist that person on the day of Qiyamah and this is why people that help others people that reach out to others every day if you look at their life they are excelling they are flying in colors why? because they have believed in the message of Allah they are assisting others they understand, they feel the connection when you see a Muslim today we have become so dirty that when you see a Muslim you think the worst of him when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says you should think good of the believer a female, a male, whoever they may be Allah says think good and when you are thinking good you should think good better than yourself Allahu Akbar. Where are we heading? Fa'ayna tadhabun. Where are we going, my brothers? It is a very passionate call. And this is why we have become such that the messenger has become far from our lives. Because only if we keep the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, close to us, we will now understand the sweetness of iman. And this is why a lot of people are struggling with even to start off with Salat al-Fajr. Because they and the messenger, they are far. Look at how the companions of the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when it comes to assisting, when it comes to helping one another, when it comes to giving charity, look at how they are rushing. Lahu fuqaha, the messenger has a lot of people. They are rushing, they are rushing to do something to earn the reward and pleasure of Allah. What of us today? You go to a masjid, they say, please donate 10 naira for us to renovate the masjid. You are very, very difficult or having difficulty in your heart to give that 10 naira. But if it's a lady, she says, I want ice cream, you are going to Dubai and get her call soon and come back. Then you are a fool, mashallah. Not actually fool as F-O-O-L. No, fool as F-O-U-L, mashallah. But this is it. How Islam has promoted unity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, 
في سورة الحجرات إنما المؤمنون إخوة فأصلحوا بين أخويكم You have a problem with someone solve the problem Yes definitely Allah knows there are going to be challenges Let me tell you something You fight the most with your best friend Believe me Abu Bakr is laughing MashaAllah The most fight happens between your best friend You know why? Because you guys have believed that Allah brought you together. So there are certain differences that you have. And because of understanding that you are together for the sake of Allah, sometimes you try to bend and move along with each other. Am I right? My brother, do you fight with your best friend a lot? I hope she's not a lady, mashallah. But I can tell you, I have a lot of quarrels with my best friend. Even today, I had one. But halal quarrels, mashallah. So Allah says, فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَ أَخَوَيْكُمْ You should actually create sulh. You should create reconcilement between yourselves. And this is what Allah says, وَالسُلْحُ خَيْرِ Every time you do sulh, it is always good. Look at the companions of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nobody ever said they never had differences between them. Abu Bakr and Umar, they had problems, they differed, especially during the time of the Khulafa. The time of upholding the message, the Khalifa al Rashidun, they had problems within them. But have you ever heard that they had problems that they wanted to kill themselves? No, because they are believers. And some other people intervene in their matters. Bilal ibn Rabah, we know him. Bilal ibn Rabah was a slave of someone known as Umayyah ibn Khalaf. This man, when he accepted Islam, he was being tortured. He was facing a lot of persecution from the Quraysh. Because Umayyah ibn Khalaf was not a Muslim. And then this man, no matter how he faced difficulties, what were his words? Ahadun ahad, ahadun ahad, one, 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 one. Who is he referring to? He's referring to Allah. Just who saved him out of the problem? Abu Bakr as Siddiq saw him and he saw the torture was too much. He actually told Umayyah ibn Khalaf, Can you give me this, your slave? I am willing to purchase him so that he may not endure that punishment again. And this was how Bilal, the first man to call the Azan, was freed from the punishment. Amr ibn Yasir, a man from the tri tribe of Banu Khuzayma, Banu Makhzum actually, Banu Makhzum, a man from the tribe of Banu Makhzum, he faced a lot of difficulties. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Oh Ammar, isbir, be patient because your palace is in the hereafter waiting for you. Out of punishment. Look at Kabbar ibn al-Arat, who was also a companion of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The stories has told us Khabab was one of the best in terms of making sword. He was the slave of someone known as Ummu Ammar bin Saba al khuzayiya This man endured a lot of difficulties. But who purchased him? The same Abu Bakr as siddiq radiallahu anhu. Look at the brotherhood. Today you see a brother about to die. You say, leave him to die. We want him to go. He's disturbing our peace. Is that the teaching of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? No. The teaching of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is for you to be as close as you can. Now let's get back to more serious issues that are facing the society. My brothers, my sisters, we have gotten to a point in this ummah that we feel another person who has said the shahada is not a Muslim because of a disagreement that we've had with them. Please testify, am I right? Okay, I don't think I'm right because the response is no. Am I right? You see a person because you have differences of opinion with him, he calls you a kafir. He calls you a person who slanders. He calls you a person who has a lot of issues. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has informed us, yes, the religion is not going to be one. The religion is going to be separated. But if people have separated in Islam, unfortunately, that is not what we want. But in the Ladina Faraku Dina Hum Wakanu Shia Allah Tamin Hum Fishay, in the Ma'amru Hum Ilallah, their matter is unto Allah. If Allah says, I'm handling their matter, what makes you feel that you are superior over Allah to decide whether they are believers or they are not? Why is it that we have lost the sense of humanity? 
the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he eats sometimes with companions today we feel it a problem to eat with our brothers the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he show a lot of love to his companions but today when you tell a brother oh brother i love you for the sake of allah the next thing they say he's a gay what type of a useless society is this if the messenger knew it was haram do you think he would have done it in the first place what is the problem because we are brainwashed with ideologies of idiotic beliefs. And this is why we as Muslims are failing. And this is why I tell you, my brothers, Wallahi, the non-believers are winning over us. We need to wake up. We need to wake up because the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the best that has ever been sent to earth. Allah says, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرُجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ The Messenger of Allah is the best example that Allah has ever given to you on earth. So you follow him if you know that you want to meet Allah and come to the last day. My brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has informed us through the blessed lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look at what is happening in Gaza. Why are we feeling it in our heart? Why? Because we are brothers indeed. Some are feeling it because they are just killing people. But we Muslims are feeling it because they are our brothers. They believed in Allah. They are being judged or they are being wrongly accused over their own property which is masjid al-aqsa so we need to feel the pain because masjid al-aqsa belongs to the muslims and inshallah victory shall return to the muslims but we feel it in our heart but apart from feeling it in your heart there is something you can do better you can make a dua the hadith of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says man ra'a minkum munkaran falyughayyirhu biyadihi fa in lam yasrif bi lisanihi fa in lam yasrif bi qalbihi wa dhalika adhafu al-iman but we see a post we say oh ghazza the next thing we keep it when you see a post of someone bombarded you need to make a dua you need to make a prayer oh allah Grant them victory. Allahumma ansur ikhwalana fi Palestine. Say Ameen. Wallahi, the dua is heard by Allah and the messengers of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, which are the companions that move between the skies and the heavens. They've heard our dua and we definitely are going to achieve that. But my brothers, what do we need to do? Give a charity. There are so many Islamic organizations that they receive donations. Give even if it's 1,000 naira. If you don't have 1,000 naira, what you can do that is better is make the dua for them. That is brotherhood. That is love. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Al-mu'minu karajulun wahid. A believer is like one man. Ishtaka aynahu. If the man has a problem in his eyes, Ishtaka kulluhu. Every single organ of his body has a problem. Ishtaka ra'asu. If the man is feeling headache in his head, Ishtaka kullu. The entire believers are suffering. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that anyone who kills without any request for him to kill is like he has killed the entire humanity. Anyone who saves, look at the verse. Allah is not saying Muslims. Allah says no. Everyone, not Muslims. Because if Allah is referring to us, he says Muslims or Mu'min. So my brothers and sisters, be those that understand. Look at this hadith, muttafaqun alayhi. A hadith that has been agreed upon. The messenger says, when the eyes of one Muslim is aching him, it is as if the entire body of all the Muslims are going through hardship. Today we live in a society that there are Muslims that sleep without eating. Have you reached out to them? They are Muslims that actually want to get married, but they do not have the money to get married. Have you reached out to them? They are Muslims that want to perform Hajj, and they don't have the means, and you have the means. Have you reached out to them? They are people that are facing problems within their own cycle of life. As Muslims, have you reached out to them? Wallahi, the society we are living today, I am glad to tell you, unfortunately, we have failed in our quest to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because if the messenger was here, all of us would have been embarrassed to the highest level. To the highest level. Are you not ashamed 
when the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam said to his companions that I want to see my brothers I want to see my brothers the companion says oh messenger of Allah are we not your brothers the messenger said no my brothers are those that have never seen me and have believed in me Allahu Akbar they have believed in me but the only duty is not to believe the duty is also to believe and implement what the messenger has access to do by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where is your iman where is the love you have for one another where is the concern you have for the society where is it is it something that we are being told by the west to brainwash the ideologies that we have been given those values of islam that we know and love or is it that our hearts have died to the highest core that we do not even feel a flicker when you see a muslim going through a problem the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam out of his great wisdom before he goes back to his house he needs to confirm is this person okay is that person okay is that person okay has this person eaten what has happened to this person this person is sick have you checked on him look at us today they call you someone is sick someone you know but you will not go why because we are focused on who will give us money we are focused on who will benefit us who will carry one million naira and give it to us? That is where we are focused on. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has informed us, Wallahi, whatever, whatever you have in the dunya, it is going to end. But whatever you have kept with Allah still remains. And that can be in form of brotherhood. Whatever you possess in the dunya, it's going to perish. It's going to finish. But whatever you've stored with Allah, it is a storage that never gets full or expired. So why don't you come back? Look at the ways that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam has informed us to live with one another, to have the concern for one another. Look at when the Messenger went to Medina al-Munawwara. Look at how the Ansar received him. Look at how the people of Medina received the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Islam is an amazing religion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you do good to your brother in the deen, I'm going to reward you. Allah says, out of his mercy, even if you do good for the intention alone, I'm going to give you the reward for the intention. But if you carry out the deed, I'm going to give you the full reward. Why are we confused? Why are we losing focus? Why? We need to come back. We need to go back. Those that see that, oh, I don't want to go to the madrasa and learn. It's the best thing for you. Go back, read the stories of the past. Read how the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, interacted with non-Muslims to start with. Then you come to Muslims that you will know Islam is a full celebration of life. So are we going to make a promise to Allah that we are going to change? We are going to be brothers? Allah has informed us that from the past, they say, O oh Allah, Allah, forgives, Allah forgive us. And forgive those that have passed on in faith. The greatest gift that Allah can give you is Iman. And when he gave you Iman, he told you that Iman is connected to what? To brotherhood, unity, be together, be one. Look at the tribe of Banu Aws and Banu Khazraj. When the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam came to them, a Jew from Medina al-Munawwara, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam has informed us. Look at how Islam promotes goodness. The first thing he did in Medina, he says, Oh, people, Afshu salama baynakum. That's the first thing. If a salam is tendered over you, you have no option. You have to say, Wa salam. But be careful so that they don't tell you, Assalamu alaikum. Because it was said to the Messenger, sallam, he thought someone said, Assalamu alaikum, but the person was actually saying, Oh, Messenger, may death be upon you. And then Aisha, radiallahu anha, you know, the women, they can be very protective. She says, Wassalamu alaikum wa la'na. MashaAllah, I hope my wife can be so protective. MashaAllah. Because the wives of today, okay, let me be quiet so that she doesn't hear this. Number one, he said, Ashu salama baynakum. 
you should actually spread peace. Your religion is all about peace. Because Allah has chosen Islam for you as a peaceful religion. And then he says, You should feed people with food. And mashallah, there's one thing I need to say, and I will thank all the people of Meduguri because since I came here, mashallah, the hospitality has been amazing. Mashallah. I like the food. Yesterday I was at the wedding and I ate something. Uh, Brother Abakar, what's the name of that thing? The first thing. Basisu, mashallah, mashallah, <laughs> mashallah, and it was amazing. And the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam has actually told us, you should share the food, give the food, give the food, give the food, give the food, because what you have given, that is what is yours, but what you've eaten doesn't belong to you. What you gave, that is what belongs to you in real fact. So, my brothers and sisters. I urge every single one of you, be brothers in religion, be brothers in business, be brothers in humanity. And if I say be brothers in business, don't go and say, ah, Sheikh Abdullah said we should be brothers. Don't worry, let me give you this for free. No, charge him money. Yes. Yes, I didn't say give it for free because I will not give it for free to my best friend. I will charge him as well. MashaAllah. So this is the religion of Allah that he has upheld myself and you. And guess what? When we pass away, when we pass away and we go into a place known as Barzakh, mashallah. When we go into Barzakh, the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, the believers that know each other, the believers that are together on earth, they will reconnect with each other. al arwahu junud mujannada The souls of the believers are like conscripted soldiers. They get along, they move along. And this is why the messenger has informed us from the beginning, be careful who you make as your friend. Be careful because they have a lot of influence in shaping your future and your relationship with Allah. If your friend is a person who always goes to the masjid, what will stop you from going to the masjid? Nothing. But if you are a shaitan, then you will not go to the masjid. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us peace. May he forgive our sins. All of us are sinners, wallahi, all of us, and we really acknowledge the fact that Allah is the most merciful and we, we are asking Allah to grant us peace, mercy, forgiveness, and whatever we want. Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqa wa rzuqna tiba'a, oh Allah, grant us victory to stay on the right path, because that is the best thing for us to do. My brothers, my sisters, in this beautiful masjid, this comes to the end of my lecture today. I hope I will benefit from the words of Allah and the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that I've mentioned. And I also hope that all of you will benefit from it because indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has informed us in Surah At-Tawbah that the believers al-mu'minun wal-mu'minat ba'duhum awliya'u ba'd an ya'muruna bil-ma'rufi wa yinhawna al-munkar. They actually, they are allies of one another. They have the backs of one another. Allah says they enjoy good together. They do everything together. Allah says, Ula'ika sayarhamhum Allah. Allah will grant them mercy. So be protective. Protect Muslims. Wherever you see your brother, someone speaks bad about him, say, brother, if you want to speak about him, let him come before you speak about him. Don't speak at his back. Speak the truth. One other thing I need to mention before I leave. I wanted to close, but this hadith came to my head. And it's about jealousy. You know why? Because I have a lot of people that are so jealous because of the type of circle I keep around me because they are good people, mashallah, such as Abu Bakr, mashallah. My brothers, my sisters, I want to inform you, and this is the hadith of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you are together with a person and you know that you are fulfilling the commands and obligation of Allah and people are putting an eye over that affair of yours, try to restrict yourself. The hadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Seek, seek secrecy over your affairs because everyone whom Allah has bestowed a ni'mah is a possessor of jealousy. So this is very important. 
And I'm telling you this because I know a lot of people, you see someone with someone, you don't want them to be together. What's your reason for that? Allah connected them. Allah has connected those hearts together. So what issue do you have on it? May Allah grant you victory and success. And may do guri jazakumullahu khairan for having us. And we wish to be back, inshallah. Uh, when? Soon. MashaAllah. <laughs> Allah make it easy and grant the owner of this masjid good health and success and everything he desire in the dunya and in the akhirah and all of us. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Maybe there may be questions and answers, right?